Hey guys, snow on the ground. A little bit of snow on my solar panels. With wind turbines turning like crazy. I want y'all to look. I'll put the links to them turbines below this video because you know what? I'm impressed with them. Let me get out here to the shop right quick. We're going to show you some upgrades. All right, now you see out there on the roof, we have the wind turbine spinning. Wind speeds are between 10 and 12 miles per hour. I'm going to show you this, guys. That is the big inverter. Y'all going to like this thing. Huge transformer. Look at the previous video, and you're going to see that this one here is 3,000 watts with a 6,000 watt surge. And actually, I think it handled more than that because I ran a 90 amp mig off of it. Because they said, blow it up, we send you a new one. I'm like, well, hell yeah, I'll try it. Didn't do it. Um, look below the video, links to everything. Everything I show in here, I'll put links to it so that you know and you can go look at the specs, you can read the details, you can tell me whether or not it was be, if you find something better, share it. We want to know. So look over here. You see how it's hooked up? Big 10 gauge RV cord, stranded. Nice stuff. Need to get a cover for that box. But we have pigtails that are right up there. You see where that big conduit's coming through? We have a box right up there. You can almost see the shadow of it around right the edge. We have a box, and we're going to be dropping 12-gauge pigtails down um, down the wall with a cover over it. And you can see my shop's got two cameras there also. But um, plugging into here so they can handle power going back to the house as well as power that goes to the back room. And right now, we're running all... Uh, we're running all the lights in here off of that one over there, which it's uh, modified pretty good pretty good quality But we prefer a true sine wave now over here Let me turn my little light on my torch All right, look at this crazy thing And I'll get back over there in just a minute over there in just a minute, but let's get over here on this now What you see here? Here's the wind turbines Here they are This is the Chinese one uh, these are th these two here are the Chinese turbines. So you're seeing right here there there is uh, what is that 10 amps down here 25 amps and down here this is my thermodyne which is putting out it's down there kind of in the prop wash I guess. So pretty good not too bad and these are wind speeds 12 sometimes look like 15 mile an hour gusts might be coming up on us. But not too bad. So you think about it. Now look over here in solar. This is the funny part. They're covered. They're snowed. They're iced over right now, heavy too. Look at this. <laughs> They're not even responding. Look at that. And if it wasn't for me having these wind turbines, look at that amperage coming into my big battery bank. If it wasn't for that, we would be screwed with, with no power. Now, you're probably wondering why I have my old little controller. If you go back and look at the video five years ago, you see my my old little controller. This is the old ones, and I've got some new ones coming, but this is the real old one. So this one here has been about five years old, and I pulled it down when I took my old Winmax down, but I'm using it because it's just so good. And I had to tell somebody the other day, it's the last one I had left. I got, I got a bunch more coming, though. But over here, two 150-watt resistors, okay, a 40-amp SSR. Now, that was what you look for. Here's what you look for. When you order an SSR, you look for the DD. That's DC, DC. So that's, that's DC out, DC voltage to activate, which most of them are. But DC current and voltage between your contacts. And you come in, you'll see right here where it says plus. This is where you're going to put your battery to. So this will be battery power if you can follow it back to that lug right there. So that's battery. I stuck myself with a piece of wire. Look at that. And this will be going... That's your brake switch, basically, your breaker switch, contact, and that'll be sending it over. Now, why do we have this? Well, this one, using the multimeter, I set at 14.7. So what it does is when I put this hurricane wind power turbine on this system, and I do that, and then I'm looking at these things making crazy power. Look at this. You look at this. Look, look below the video, and I'll put the link to at the end of the video or some of them up here to these videos about these turbines. These damn things work really good. They are not a joke. So you get in here and you look, and you see what they are. They're powerful. They're real. It's not a joke. A lot of people, like, they see these turbines rated 5,000 watts, and they weigh, like, 7 pounds. That's not true. The thing that you guys need to understand, and y'all need to really understand this, you see how I set up. 
I build, I build for what you have to have. And if you see these little turbines, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me blank out right here. I'm gonna show you these pictures. Now, when you see a turbine like that, that weighs five kilos, 12, 14 pounds, and you see that thing and it says 5,000 watts, 45,000 watts, 4,000 watts, man, look, there's nothing that accounts for, for power like weight. So do you imagine that a, that little bitty turbine, little thing is about the size of my hand with little 42 inch blades. Do you, can you imagine that, that that turbine could even consider producing more than a couple of hundred watts. So if you look at this 800 watt turbine that I got, and you look at the big hurricane turbine I just got, them things are literally, literally the size of a milk jug, a gallon milk jug, the generator head. Now, if you have a 3,500 watt RV generator, like a Harbor Freight, look how big that generator is to make 3,500 watts. Watts are watts, man. It don't matter. So anytime you see this ad that says 5,000 watts, $114, $120, $130, $130, you're getting ripped off. You're getting ripped off. If you see something about, about litter, and I got big hands, but, but like a little car alternator, and it says 2,000 watts, you're getting ripped off. It's that simple. But that controller over there, it's a bad stick. That controller over there is designed in case I get runaway. In other words, I get to my full diversion points on this one, which is 14.55 volts. And these are really simple to adjust. You see that one right there where it says float? Turn it backwards, turn it forward. You go use an eyeglass screwdriver, and it changes your, your whole points right there. So let me get in here, and I'll show you. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go on it. And I want you to watch that voltage down to 1450. Turn it up. 1455, turn it up, 1460, and that'll be your divert. So it'll it'll hit, that's your float. So it'll divert at that point. Now we, we run this at 1455 because these are lead acid and they're designed to handle that. So you look in here, you just dropped a big cup on the floor there, but you look in here and they're designed to handle actually 1465. So we let it divert at that, and sometimes it'll actually come up a little above it because the load is high enough. But sitting over here, you have 400, 300, two of those are 150s apiece, and 500 sitting there. 1,200 watts um, diversion. Getting back over here, you look over here and you see the wind turbine's output. Now, the wind turbine output is being hampered a little bit because look what I had to do. Now, that's temporary. It's temporary. I use these things a lot. A lot of people ask me where I get them at. I'll put a link down there. They're strip connectors. They're cheap. They work good, but they're cheap. Um, but you look over here, and you still got the same setups, and I just hadn't extend them. Now, we won't extend it whenever I go up, put on my brake switch system on this wall here instead of upstairs, and we come down with all these wires to feed that. The solar coming in is all 6-gauge, and... Wires going out of six gauge, and then over here is one gauge, um, and then you have two gauge that's right now temporarily being used, but it'll be one gauge also because the wind turbines put out that much power. But the reason I have set this up in here like this is so that if my turbine, if my controller over there gets out of hand and it can't control it, because I will be putting that hurricane wind turbine on here, and when I put it on here, that thing might cook my freaking batteries if I don't act right and put the right kind of controllers on it. So adding another 300 watts of diversion means that every time it runs up too high, I can do that. In a windstorm, we'll just come out here and put those new resistor-loaded brakes in on probably the, uh, probably put it on one or two of these and cut back our power because we won't need it. It'll just be diverting all the time. And we're also going to go automatic on some of it. So giving you guys a little rundown. Uh, a lot of guys want to know how to do this. And this controller, you can get it. 
They don't have this um, case for it. You don't have to have the case for it. You can buy a regular case and just put you some standoffs in it and mount it. But that's a purpose-made bud case, and I'll see if I can find it. I'll try. I'll try to find the link for that case, too. Um, the guy that sells these actually might have a link to this case. But this little temperature controller is set up so that when my SSRs divert, this wouldn't be in the one with the heaviest load because it's 500 watt. So 500 watt on a 60 amp, that's kind of as far as you want to push one. And this one here is 400 watt on a 60 amp, and this one over here is 300 watt on a 40 amp. It's fairly high for a 40 amp. So you want to run them like that. But every time that it gets to 91 degrees on that, you see that little sensor going up in there? And I got a little piece of aluminum holding it up against the bottom of that heat sink. It will blow air across them and through them, you see? And it cools them off. And it works beautifully. It has a four-second delay adjustability. It's real simple. The rule, I mean, the whole process on that is real simple. So there you go, guys. You can even take that little controller. If you've got a battery bank that keeps getting overheated from your solar, get you one of these and get you some of these. These right here are just shower drains at Lowe's, like three bucks. See a little grill? And you can mount a 90 millimeter fan, two of them in here, and then put you like I have on the other side ports, and it'll just draw air across and cool your battery bank using one of those. And that sensor wire, look how long it is. It's about five feet. So you could mount it like on the wall and run the sensor wire down in the battery bank and find your hottest location and draft it, draft it. So if there's just a seven degree temperature rise and you know there's going to be hydrogen present, draft it. Pretty easy. Brushless though, make sure you use brushless fans. Sparks and hydrogen, you know. But no brushes, no brushes. Um, but I just want to give y'all guys an update of what's going on here, how this came out. But it sounds like wind speeds might be picking up to 15 now. We had supposed to get 15 mile an hour gusts today. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be showing that hurricane wind, wind power thing here pretty quick. But take a look. It's working out fine. We're making it happen.